yeah so heading is torque so the basic definition of torque is a rotational effect of force generally when we apply force on a body it will move the body like force can move the body or accelerate the body to be frank but if you apply a couple of force like there are two forces acting in such a way that body somewhere it is fixed and because of the two applied forces if the object is able to rotate then that effect of force we will call as torque okay example say if i apply force at this point so this will be moving this will be moving if i apply force at this point this is not moving this is rotating so this effect of force we will call as torque so very simple definition of torque we can say as it is it is a rotational effect a rotational effect of the force rotational effect of a force another name of torque is couple of force will say couple simply means couple of force and when two forces because without second force may be holding or may be rotating we cannot rotate the body actually there must be another force which is supporting the body such a way that one more force can rotate the body remember this point so that's why we will call it as a, uh, also as couple or couple of force okay now the mathematical expression of the torque let us see mathematically mathematically torque is given by torque is given by tau vector is equals to r vector cross f vector exactly like angular momentum only nothing more than that as like we discussed angular momentum was r vector cross p vector like position vector cross linear momentum vector in the same way rotational effect of a force is nothing but position vector cross force vector okay so as we know already that we can express this like this torque is equal to r f sin theta n cap okay so in this again two expressions possibly what are those torque is equal to r f sin theta separately i am writing n cap and we can also write torque vector is equals to f into r sin theta n cap got it okay so now what does this two different expressions of torque means let us see let us consider a situation let there is a rigid body in any x y plane where it is fixed at this point and a force is applied at a particular point somewhere here of amount f the point of application of force is making the position vector r which is at an angle theta with x axis okay now if we expand the equations of this situation this will be again theta and if i take the components of r obviously components of r this will be r cos theta and this will be r sin theta okay let's take it is not fixed here let's take it is fixed here itself Okay, so that x of rotation we can fix at origin. Okay, here it is x of rotation. Okay, so this component will be r sine theta. Now see, r sine theta is nothing but if you observe clearly, r sine theta is nothing but the perpendicular distance between line of action of force. What is this line of action of force? Line of action of force. And what is this axis of rotation line of action of force ku axis of rotation ku nadula irukra 
perpendicular distance apna shortest distance is r sin theta so it is the shortest distance between the line of action of force and the x of force so we can take this r sin theta simply as r perpendicular exactly if i take the components of f this is the line of f so this component will be f cos theta this component will be f sin theta where f sin theta is nothing but the perpendicular component of force to the position theta so f sin theta we can also say as f so the meaning of this expression or meaning of this expression is nothing but this is r times the perpendicular component of force and this is nothing but f times perpendicular distance between the line of action of force and axis of rotation so briefly i can say r perpendicular is the perpendicular distance the perpendicular distance between line of action of force and axis of rotation got it similarly f perpendicular i can conclude as f perpendicular i can conclude as perpendicular component of force to the position vector which is r got it so finally finally we concluded that i concluded the torque magnitude is nothing but r f perpendicular r f r perpendicular this is what we use actually yeah you can give a note point as note it says that if r perpendicular is zero what does it means it means that force is passing through axis of rotation apo then perpendicular at the time only the perpendicular distance will become zero when force is passing exactly through the axis of rotation what will be the perpendicular distance between them zero so if r perpendicular is zero which means actually f is passing through passing through what axis of rotation then what happens then torque due to that force will be what zero torque due to that force will be what zero understand my point okay very very important concept basic basic problems will they ask in neat exam example questions i'll write one or two models we'll see and then we'll go to other expressions of torque okay look at this example let's take a rod of length l and mass m is suspended with a hinge what is this hinge hinge means something which is or which makes the body rotatable i mean or like a clip like a clip like this it will be holding like this so we can rotate the body around it okay that's what we will call as hinge because there will be questions even from the concept of hinge reaction their hinge means what a support but it is not like fixed one about that the body can be rotated that is the meaning of hinge okay now the question is say a beautiful question that i'll make here a force f is acting at an angle 30 degrees with the length of the rod at a length l by 4 from the one of the ends of the rod then the question is what is the torque due to that force or what is the torque of that force do you understand yeah how to resolve it how to simplify it either r perpendicular into f you can use r f perpendicular into r anything both the formulas are valid but choosing the formulas according to the given data is the smart way to solve the problem both the formulas can be applied there is no there is nothing wrong in that but which formula will give the answer in a short way is matter like you need to select that kind of right see so if i take the components of this force logically this will be 30 degrees again 
isn't it? No. This will be 60 degrees because this is 30 now. Okay, so this is the force line. So this will be F cos 60. This will be F sin 60. Now if I apply the formula, torque is equals to R into F perpendicular. Perpendicular means what? Which component of the force perpendicular to the position vector? This is x of rotation that now because rod can rotate about this point. And this is the position vector now. For the position vector, perpendicular component of force is this only no. So I can say R. R is what? L minus L by 4 into F cos 60. What is the answer? 3L by 4 into F by 2, which is 3FL by 8 Newton meters. Okay. Clear? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Because of this component, this component, the rod will rotate like this, which is anti-clockwise. In our case, it is K cap. K cap. According to the plan. Or what if I use? What if I use F into R perpendicular? Yes. How to do it? F into R perpendicular. If I use another formula. Look at the situation very clear. This is the rod, right? And force is acting like this. Not like that. It's at a distance. L by 4. Like this. This is X of rotation. And this is the line of action of force. From the axis of rotation, line of action of force. 90 degrees vertical no? perpendicular distance. No. So this is what are perpendicular. From the line of action of force to axis of rotation. Perpendicular distance. So see, as I told you, this angle is how much? 30 degrees. This length is how much? How much? 3L by 4. So, or perpendicular we can calculate or not. Sin 30 if we write. What it will be? Opposite or perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. 3L by 4. Or perpendicular is equals to sin 30. 1 by 2 into 3L by 4. So, what is the answer? 3L by 8. This is our perpendicular substitute here. F into 3L by same or not? What is the answer? 3FL by 8. But here, than calculating this perpendicular distance, taking perpendicular component is a bit easier. Understand? So, choosing the right formula according to the given condition is mandatory. That will come from the practice of the persons. Nothing more. Clear? Clear? Is it? Yes. One more question. One more question. There is a rod placed on horizontal line with two supports. With two supports. Not with two supports that will come in equilibrium case. We'll discuss it later. Let's take with only one support. Okay. Like this. Right? Here I kept 3 kg mass. And this distance is L by 2. Okay. Okay, let's go with simple question first and then I will improve the depth. L by 2. And this distance also will be how much? My question is, what must be the value of the mass that I need to keep here so that it will not rotate? Tell me. So that it will not rotate. What is the value of M? Logically, torque must be 0. Torque 0 now. The torque produced by 3 kilograms must be same as torque produced by the same. The torque produced by 3 kg obviously will be in clockwise sign. 
because this mass will try to rotate the rod like this and torque produced by this m will be opposite direction which is in anti clockwise direction so torque about the center only you know, obviously it will rotate this is axis of rotation so i can say that m into g into perpendicular distance idana because line of action of force is this this is perpendicular distance l by 2 is equals to 3 into g into l by 2 torque by 3 kg torque by m so obviously it will be 3 kg equilibrium case understand my point okay puri dai le now now see. one more example important case there is a there is a disk circular disk of radius r fixed at its center in a horizontal plane like this now there is a disk and it is fixed rotatable i am applying a force here at the topmost point and applying a force here at bottommost point it is fixed at its center now my question is what is the torque produced by this two forces net torque the net torque right i i want to know what is the net torque or what will be the net torque of this situation so uh, can you say think x of rotation is this line of action of force is this this is what perpendicular distance right what is this radius for this also same logic this force will produce a torque in this force will produce torque in clockwise or anti clockwise both <laughs> clockwise so both torques are getting added or getting subtracted added because both are acting in the same direction so net torque will be f into r force into perpendicular distance plus f into r so what is net torque understand one more question this question you can see in hc verma book hc verma rotational mechanics this model question is there okay very nice question the heart symbol will be there this one is your question who is there in that one okay is there aki aki go go okay so this is fixed at its center let's see our more concepts of physics volume 1 green color lo untadu ga unchu if we get exact question we'll say otherwise i'll i'll give some date okay so one force is acting 10 newtons like this one force is acting 20 newtons like this this distance is given as 5 cm and one force is acting like this 30 newtons at a distance 6 meters okay there are three forces acting on this heart symbol so my question is what is the net torque acting on it what is the net torque acting on it t 
torque due to 10 newtons will be what zero because it is passing through x of rotation there will be no perpendicular distance understand and what is the torque due to 20 newtons force into perpendicular distance 20 into 5 cm clockwise anti clockwise anti clockwise what about torque due to 30 newtons force into perpendicular distance clockwise or anti clockwise anti clockwise force if apply pane pedidana rotate agu will rotate like this only no yes now net torque will be what 20 into 5 Into ten power minus two plus thirty into six into ten power minus two newton meters. Okay. Ten power minus one eighteen. This is one plus one point eight, isn't it? So what is total? Two point eight newton. Okay, so calculation of net torque on any rigid body, you must always check what is the perpendicular distance. Ninety percent questions can be solved by perpendicular distance method. Only ten percent questions can be solved by the perpendicular component of force. Okay, so understand the concept clearly. What is torque and how to calculate torque? Torque is simply not F into R. F into R means F into R perpendicular. Illa na R into F perpendicular. So that inner meaning of that F into R perpendicular, R into F perpendicular is important. Okay. Otherwise, even recently one question, one question asked in under this one, but part exam, practice test, part test exam, recently in repeaters, there is a, there is a disc, right? The question was here, nine newtons force. Here, four newtons force. And here, six newtons force. And here, five newtons force at an angle thirty degrees. And the radius of this is twenty centimeters. Then what is the net torque? This is the question. Think of it. Think of it. Try it again. One force four newtons. Another force nine newtons. Another force five newtons. Another force six newtons. Like this, it is a disc. Then what is the net torque of the situation? Think means solve. I'll give you two minutes time. Two minute high bus, bus two minute. copy the question and try i'll check the dc verma book question once one minute try this question i'll check the dc verma question in google
What is the answer? Hmm? 1.5. Sure. Head or rotation of the next. Okay, see. Answer for this question. 1.5. Okay, see. Torque due to this force will be zero. Mm -hmm. Torque due to this will be nine into twenty mm -hmm. centimeters of there. So it is acting in clockwise. This will be acting in anti-clockwise. This will be acting in clockwise. So let us add these two torques. So torque of this pi newtons five into perpendicular distance only. Now we need to take this is what perpendicular distance. This is the line of action of force, and this is perpendicular distance. So if it is twenty, what about this? This will be 60 degrees because it is perpendicular. So if it is 20, this will be 20 cos 60. 20 cos 60 is 1 by 2. Put 10. So it is 10 minus torque due to this 4 into perpendicular distance. Sorry, 20 is net torque. So what it will be? 18 plus 50 minus 80. 50 minus 80. So, it is 100, 1.5 Newton meters. Is it 1.5? It is in centimeters, right? Without taking this length, how did you get? Components. Okay, that's good. Anything you can take. Okay, I hope you understand. So, this is the way that we calculate the net torque always. Now, let's get into the stuff of torque in case of rigid bodies as we discussed angular momentum in case of rigid bodies was how much i omega for a rigid body what is the angular momentum i omega for point mass m v r perpendicular ilana m r v perpendicular like that what will be the torque this derivation actually sounds very beautiful if you understand okay this derivation also will be there in hc verma book but one of the best derivations that I have seen in rotational mechanics. So let us derive it and after that I will give the conclusions regarding it. Actually the final answer that we are going to get is torque is equal to I alpha. But how does this I alpha comes? Let us have a look. Okay. Yes. So you can keep side reading. Torque as angular acceleration in terms of angular acceleration that is the case okay yeah let us consider a rigid body something like this is fixed here okay its x-axis and y-axis are like this Axis. This is the axis of rotation. Let me take it little down. This is the axis of rotation. That it can rotate about this point. Okay. And I took a force acting at this point. It's a point. Whose position vector is R. Okay. Now, think like this. If this force is able to rotate this rigid body of total mass capital M, when it is rotating, this particular point mass appears to be in a what path? Circular path. Obviously. Because it will be rotating. So if it is rotating about a fixed axis, then this particular point mass will be appearing in any circular path of radius half. Understand? Now let us talk about only that point mass or point P which is moving in a circular path. Okay. Let 
at P a point mass point mass Dm is there and it rotates in circular path. Understand? Circular path. If it is rotating in circular path, what acceleration that it will have? What acceleration that it will have? Centripetal acceleration as well as tangential acceleration. Because we are producing torque here, which means omega is varying, because of rate of change of omega only, there will be alpha. Whenever alpha is there, whenever alpha is there, omega is changing, then definitely V also will be changing. So speed changing and direction of velocity changing. Obviously, there will be centripetal acceleration as well as tangential acceleration. And centripetal acceleration will be what? V square by R towards the center. The towards the center I am taking as R cap with the negative. Why negative you will understand. So. And tangential acceleration we know already. dV by dt. This is along T cap, tangent direction. Because the tangential acceleration will be acting like this. Centripetal acceleration will be acting is and dt. Now you understood right why I took minus r cap because it is exactly opposite to the position vector. Position vector will be always from the origin to the outputs, from the origin to the outside point. That is what r cap. Opposite of that will be minus r cap. Understand? Okay. So now, now net force will be what? M into net acceleration, isn't it? What is that M that we are considering here? Dm, point mass. Net acceleration is what? AC vector as well as AT vector. Got my point? So Dm into AC vector is what? V square by R minus R cap plus dv by dt into t cap. This is what? Yeah. Now, dv by dt is nothing but linear acceleration, which is nothing but r alpha. Rotational motion, we uh, not rotational, circular motion, we studied about this. v is equals to r omega. A is equals to R alpha. X is equals to R theta. The relation between angular quantities and linear quantities. Since the tangential acceleration is linear acceleration, we can write it as R alpha. So now becomes dm into V square by R into minus R cap plus R alpha R alpha into T. Now we have got the force, right? Now torque will be what? What will be the torque produced by that force at that point P? Torque will be what? R vector cross F vector, isn't it? Which means R vector cross dm into V square by R, okay, into minus R cap. Okay, plus R alpha into T cap. Here, here have a look once. Actually, this is D torque we can write because we are taking DM. Okay, now see. Very important point. If I take the cross product of this two, what we will write? Cross product of this two. This vector cross this vector. DM into V square by R, magnitude is like that. R vector cross R cap. R vector direction is away from the center. Minus R cap direction is towards the center. What is the angle between these two vectors? 180 degrees. 
what will be sin 180 so it will be zero understand or plus r vector into r vector magnitude is r square magnitude is r square into alpha as such r vector direction is like this as i told you and tangential vector direction is like this t cap isn't it so what is the angle between them 90 degrees what will be sin 90 understand so what is the final conclusion dm into r square into n cap will come that i will mention at last magnitude let us take d tau so what will be the total torque if i take for the entire body integral of d tau is equal to integral of dm into r square okay that is nothing but alpha into integral of dm into r square. Integral of dm into r square is nothing but di. Moment of inertia of a point mass about any x of rotation. So what it will be? Alpha into integral of di and nago. So what is the final conclusion of the torque? I alpha. It will be k cap. Because one vector is like this and one vector is like this. The cross product of these two vectors will be perpendicular to this plane. So what is the net torque of the situation? I alpha. As net angular momentum of rigid body is I omega, net torque of the rigid body is what? Derivation table. Actually derivation is not required for the need students. But long back I derived this. So I wanted to check whether I can derive it or not. Almost one and a half years back. Understand? So the net torque, the net torque acting on any rigid body, net torque acting on any rigid body is always given by I alpha. What is I? Moment of inertia of that rigid body. What is alpha? Angular acceleration. Okay. Okay. Yes. See, now one example and then we will go to the case of relation between angular momentum and torque. That is the last one related to the topic. M is there, no problem. Okay. Now let us write an example. Let us try. There is a disc now, having a support at its center and a force of amount F is applied at the topmost end. Its mass is M and radius is R. Then what is the angular acceleration of this due to the force? What is the angular acceleration of the disc due to the applied force? Tell me. Tell me. What will be the net torque acting on it? Force into perpendicular distance. And mg will be acting, of course. But that will be passing through axis of rotation. No? Whenever a force is passing through axis of rotation, torque will be zero. zero. So only F can produce the torque here. So what will be that torque? F into R is equals to I alpha. So F into R is equals to I. Moment of inertia of a disk of mass M and radius are about its central axis or center of mass axis. What is the formula? MR square by 2. That's good. Into. So 2F by MR. This angular. Let me point. Here. Yes. So, like this, they'll ask questions. Part one more example. One more example. Yes. There is a cylinder. Another cylindrical body. Solid cylinder I am taking of mass M radius is being supported with a string like this. Okay. The string wind panni. Come up the attach panni. We left it. When we leave it, how it will be coming down? Rotating and coming down only now. Exactly like this. 
I winded a wire. Okay, and these two ends I just attach to a support and I left it. So it will be coming down like this only, you know, by unwinding it. So when it is coming like this, definitely it will be rotating and coming. So it will be having some angular acceleration. What will be the angular acceleration? This is my question. Tell me. Little deep question, but easy now. Who will produce torque here? Tension force will produce the torque here because string will be attached to this at edge. About the string, it will rotate and come. It is an arrow. Understand? So, string, tension force, I think your brother. Yeah, so string will be like this, right? So tension force because it is on on edge, right? On edge, force into perpendicular. Okay, so we can write <coughs> what we can write: net torque, another tension into radius plus tension into radius. Why? Because at both the ends it is there now. Understand? Uh, is equals to I. So 2TR is equals moment of inertia of a solid cylinder about its center of mass axis. Mass square by 2 into what will be alpha? 4TR by let it be T itself. Because to calculate the T again, we need to go back to laws of motion. Mallet 2T down mg. So 2 mg minus 2T is equals to MA. Again, A we need to take R alpha. Again, if we substitute the conditions of these two equations, then only we'll get the exact value of alpha in terms of in terms of A or G, not in terms of T. So let it be up to T itself. Understand? Mm -hmm. One minute, sorry. A small calculation. What will be the answer? 4 T by M R. Yes, sorry. Another radian per second. Got it? Okay. So this is the way that we calculate the torque. Angular momentum, torque, and the approach of calculation of angular momentum and torque. Now finally, the last point of the day is as we know, we all know in laws of motion, Newton's laws of motion, we studied that the rate of change of linear momentum. With respect to time is always equals to net force. Do you remember? Newton's second law. Exactly. The rate of change of angular momentum is always equals to net torque. And we also know that impulse is nothing but force acting on a body for a small interval of time. Exactly. Angular impulse on a body is torque in a small interval of time. Understand? This will be equals to change in linear momentum. This will be equals to change in angular. This is the sweetest point of the day. Okay. So conclusion, overall conclusion of the concept is whenever any force is able to rotate a body about any fixed point, then that, that force can produce torque. So the rotational effect of the force is known as torque and mathematically torque is given by the cross product of R vector and F vector. That can be expressed in two ways. One is R F sin theta. If we split it into parts as like R into F sin theta or F into R sin theta. Where R into F sin theta is the position magnitude multiplied by the perpendicular component of the force. And F into R sin theta is force magnitude multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the line of action of force and the axis of rotation, which means the perpendicular distance between the two lines. Okay. So according to the given situation, either you can choose F into R perpendicular or R into F perpendicular. And both will give the same answer. Okay. Next, according to the application of the torque uh, force, the torque produced in case of any rigid body is given by I alpha, where I is the moment of inertia of the rigid body and alpha is the angular acceleration. And the relation between the angular momentum and torque is given by 
delta l by delta d is equals to tau as like delta p by delta d is equals to net force and impulse is given by force into time and angular impulse is given by torque into time and it will be always equals to linear momentum and angular impulse is always equals to that's all so based on this we need to solve some questions that we can proceed in next class and i'll share you one worksheet in group you please go through each and every concept after we discuss and each and every problem that i share in worksheet please so by listening you may understand physics but not solve physics you have to practice the question to solve the questions of physics definitely okay one minute first i will share the question paper in the group and then i will share the notes